Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online Let's Talk video with me, Sherman. Today guys, I'm going to bring you guys just a little heads up on what I'm doing with my channel so you guys get more of a understanding and can really uh, kind of deep dive into um, what, what I'm, why I'm changing my channel to this kind of setup and what it'll do for you guys um, in the long run. So. If you guys don't know what I'm what I'm doing is I'm actually changing a lot of the things on my channel to reflect more of a D and D type uh, setting, plus a more classic Elder Scrolls type uh, character selection, if you will. Now, <clears throat> I did change up a few of the the name types, uh, things like that, to to reflect more D and D mixed with more um, Elder Scrolls, if you will. So let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to back out here. I'm actually going to open up the uh, my channel here. I already got some stuff open here. I'm going to hide my comments because I got a lot of them uh, going on. So the first thing you, you need to know is the, the, the first little bit of information I, I shared with you guys was this, um, was a video talking about this, and this is w doing this with my channel. Then I showed you guys a basic concept of what it means like if you're a fighter you're an off tank damage dealer if you're a knight you're a main tank damage dealer paladins are main tank damage dealers barbarians are off tank damage dealers clerics are off healers or support they're going to be support <coughs> and damage dealers that they need to be and then priests are healers and damage dealers druids are off our support and damage dealers shamans are damage dealers and support not not that the other way around not support damage dealers they're damage dealers with support and then warlocks are support with damage and then there's magic users uh, which are damage and support bards which are hybrid support they're they're jacks of all trades masters of none they they work in any group they're they're just uh made to work they because they use everything they use magic thievery and um fighting so then you have rangers which are damage and support and thieves which are damage and support and so i explained that then i did this where i explained the descriptions um so like this is what it would say uh it would say fighter character instead of necromancer character it would say fighter character or something like that and then it would inside the um playlist it would have this description a master of martial combat and all armor training these warriors come in all types from spell swords to savages and even guards they're made to be off tanks in damage dealers, but can also be some in some cases, uh, and in also some cases, bring support on the class and skills used. So, or depending on that. And then it says primary role off tank can be damaged and support if needed. So, <clears throat> the the fighter's primary role is going to be an off tank. It can be a damage dealer when it's not playing off tank. And then clerics are battle priests basically and they're trained to stand in the front of battle using heavy armor and divine magic to aid their group this is why they're more support they're a lot of people will be like that's just a tank but they don't put anything into health they put everything into magic and stamina so this way they can stand on the front lines do damage and heal their groups they're they're just like playing a healer except you're in heavy armor and you're not using a resto staff you're just using class abilities to heal your group and every um type of cleric is going to be different because every class is, is different so there's going to be a class a, a cleric for every class and sometimes there might be two or three depending on how many different variations i can come up with so uh magic users now, I'm, I'm changing this to either spellcasters, or I might leave it magic users, I don't know. But magic users are basically a master of magic uh, arts. Uh, or, sorry, a master of magic arts training from childhood to use and master these powers in combat and support. These masters also train in the art of battle to do... Uh, to, uh, to... Yeah, of battle. So, y you may even see them in heavy armor and our battle mages and these are magical uh for these magical arts from the art of dragon magic to divine arts so <coughs> um this basically says every class has a magic base play style and some have more than one 
So there, you could be doing like say a night blade, and you're gonna have two or three different magic users. You're gonna have a blood mage. You're gonna have a shadow mage, and then you're gonna have maybe something else in between that's more of a battle mage. So you have the damage dealer, which is the shadow mage. Then you have the blood mage, which is more of a support character. And then you have the battle mage, which is the shadow, the, which would be the, well, you have the shadow mage, that, and then the battle mage version, which I don't know what I would call it. But that's how it worked. And I would create all these different classes or character designs, classifications is what I'm calling them. Um, so that this way there's a, a wider variety of choices. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna show you guys the last thing that I posted, which is this. This is the classification list would look like. So we have fighter characters, knight characters, paladin characters, barbarian characters, cleric characters, priest characters, druid characters, shaman characters, warlock characters, <clears throat> magic users, spellcasters, whatever you want to call them. We would have battle. I was thinking about putting battle mage in, but they still fit into the spellcaster region. So I'm probably going to leave battle mage out. I'm going to do rogue, ranger, and bard. And these are the classifications I'm going to put each of these in. So if you're looking for something like a blade singer or a spell dancer, uh, or not a spell dancer, a uh, spell weaver, things like that, they would be under the bard because they use a mix of magic and Sorcery, uh, sword and sorcery, basically. Then if you're looking for something who's more of a protector of the outskirts of humanity or um, society in general that hunt big monsters and stuff, you'd be a ranger. If you wanted to be something that was more like an assassin or a thief or a bandit or, or um, a swashbuckler or a pirate or something, that would be a rogue. If you wanted to be something that's like a, a wizard, or a, uh, a lightning specialist kind of thing. That would be a battle mage. A warlock is more like a cultist, okay? They make deals and packs with demons and, and other entities to gain power. So the warlock itself is basically like a cultist. Now I know a lot of people would say, well, wouldn't that really fit into the priest section? Uh, there's a difference. A priest, calls upon divine powers. A cultist calls upon powers from another thing, another entity. So that's how that would work. A shaman is somebody who's who has the ability to do support, but they're geared more towards damage in the magical sense. And they, they use, they're kind of like paladins, or not paladins, like clerics, but they're medium armor wearers. So they're, 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 a medium armor wear version of the cleric where the cleric is more of a divine person a shaman's more of a I, I, I call upon the powers of nature and, and um, like that kind of stuff and then a druid is very similar but they're more more support orientated where a shaman's more damage orientated a druid is more support orientated so they're gonna carry more heals and stuff with them normally than a, than a shaman would. A shaman is going to carry a lot of like negative effects. Of. So they're, they're still support, but they're geared towards damage mostly. And then a, a priest is basically exactly what it sounds like. It would be like if you were a priest of Akavar, you would be a dragon priest. If you were a priest of Meridia, you would be a priest of Meridia, but you would be more of a Templar priest. If you were a priest of, say, um, well, I can't think of the Daedric Prince, the spider one. You guys know which one I'm talking about? Um, <coughs> the Daedric Prince. Like, they, they follow under Daedric and Adric gods, basically. Or uh, demigods and gods. And that's who they worship. And then clerics are like priests, but they're battle priests. They, they're trained in combat and stuff like that, but they still bring support. But they're heavy armor wearers. So they're really defensive. So they can stand right up in the midst of battle, right next to the tank even, and take a beating because they have almost the same resistance levels. They just have really small health pools. <laughs> they don't have as big as a, a, a knight or a paladin. And then the difference between a knight and a paladin <coughs> is this. 
A knight is focused more in martial combat. That means they they stem more towards stamina based stuff and less towards magicka. They still use magicka for support capabilities and stuff, but nowhere near like a paladin will. A paladin will focus on both magicka and stamina. They're more of a hybrid tank. And then a fighter is basically a, a warrior type. So they're going to be more or less your 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 average soldier, your average brigand, um, a savage, that kind of thing might fit into a fighter. But then you have barbarians. Now barbarians aren't like Conan the Barbarian. He was a, his race was barbarian. Um, and the barbarians themselves are basically, they're bred for combat. They, I mean, these guys, that's what they do. They, 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 they that's what they look for. And they're, they're very st stout and sturdy. So they have a, they don't have massive health pools. They have really tough, um, uh, mitigation. So they won't have really high health pools. Their health pools will be about 30, 20 to 30 K for tanking. And their damage is going to be like 32 K in stamina <laughs> because that's how they work. They're, they're very offensive tanks. Fighters can be offensive and defensive, and then knights and paladins are defensive tanks. They wear heavy armor for a reason. And if you wanted to play a character, for example, you wanted to play this character. This is the Blood Hunter. Now, this is a, a ranger character that I'm working on that is designed to hunt, basically, the supernatural. So they hunt undead, werewolves, um, <clears throat> witches... Warlocks, they hunt those kind of things. They're tr they train their whole lives to do this. And they use basically a type of blood magic to enhance themselves so that this way they can, they can do greater damage to the enemy and everything. And they use a mix of magic and um, sword play and bow. So they're, they're, they're rangers, but they're hunters. They're, they're, they're blood hunters. They hunt specifically these creatures of the supernatural. And sometimes they even incorporate their supernatural abilities like vampires into their, their, um, their hunting capabilities. They'll, they'll funnel health out of their enemies, like take their health away and, and give it to themselves to keep themselves in the fight. So this is a Nightblade Ranger type character. And I, when I, when I created it, I was like, this is so cool. People are going to love this. Um, but the, the premise behind it is they, they are supernatural hunters. And the, the idea from it actually came from the... You guys seen the movie Witch Hunter with Vin Diesel? It's that. But it's put in a D&D form called the Blood Hunter. And this um, dungeon master who does a live stream called Matthew Mercer, he does a live stream called uh, Critical Role for D&D, he created it for Vin Diesel himself. So Vin Diesel could play this class. And Vin Diesel even uh, like gave his approval on this class and said this is probably the funnest class he's ever played in D&D. Now you can see this character is set up right now to be a damage dealer. But this character can also off tank. Because of its design. It's a Nord. So being a Nord allows me to off tank if I need to. And still be a Ranger. <clears throat> because see certain races will be able to off tank better than other races. Like a Nord can off tank because they're naturally sturdy. They get that higher resistance value. This is what my base resistances look like, unbuffed. Okay, and that's that's with the, um, or that's with without the Nord racials. Now, when you incorporate the Nord racials, now I go to eighteen thousand, seventeen thousand. Now, if I go up here and I grab the Lord Mundus Stone. Now, I would have also change my health and stuff, but if I go up here and I change to the, or the Lady Mundus Stone, I go to 2121. Then when you incorporate, like, my, um, my class buff, which I'll just grab the Shadow Ability uh, Dark Cloak. We're going to put it right here, and this is what my resistances look like. 26, 26. This is more than enough to off-tank with. You don't need a lot of resistance to be a main tank, uh, or to be an off tank. To be a main tank, you need a lot of resistances. This is why we play a lot of times t tanks like paladins and knights in heavy armor to tank with. 
even fighters, some fighters will be off, will be main tanks because they're going to work with heavy armor. So this is the way I'm going to be doing the channel um, and everything is so I can show you guys, hey, you know what, if you want to be this blood, a blood hunter, there you go. Like, this is what he does. He uses a mix of all these different types of magic to hunt monsters. And <clears throat> they have to be versatile. They have to be able to survive, tank, and heal. They have to, basically, rangers are kind of like a... a a jack of all trades, if you will, but they're they're masters of hunting uh, monsters, and they they train to to track and hunt specific monsters. Sometimes, like they will train and track dragons, they will train and track giants, they will train and track different things, and because they're they have this thing called a favored enemy. Like if you ever seen Lord of the Rings, Aragorn was a. Um, and the one who came, became king at the end was actually a ranger. He was trained by the elves in the art of this kind of stuff. And he basically, his favorite enemy was orcs. So when he fought against orcs, he knew where they were moving, how they moved, all that stuff. So <laughs> that's why he was so good at it. Legalist was more of a of a archer than he was a ranger, so but they still fall into the same category. He was more of a of an archer, but he still falls into the same category of ranger. They're still defenders of the outskirts of humanity because they they use bows to defend their people. Um, so it still fits into that same concept. And I'll have different kinds of rangers. I'll have rangers that use dual wield and bow. Some that use bow and bow with dual wield extra, like legalists, um, like the storm ranger or things like that. And then fighters, like I said, there's a lot of different types of fighters. Fighters come in all shapes and sizes, and some can even be almost knights, but they're not quite there yet because they utilize different uh, capabilities. Like an like an eldritch knight isn't a knight. They're more of a hybrid damage dealer, off tank kind of thing. Because they use both magic and sword play. And I know what you're thinking. Well, wouldn't that fall under a paladin? Well, no, because paladins use a lot of abilities to protect their allies. So if you're like, say, a dragon knight paladin, you're going to use things like carterize, and you're going to use things like like heals and stuns and things like that to help protect your allies more than you will use um, abilities like um, damaging abilities, where a knight will use more damaging abilities to push their capabilities to deal or bring damage, where a paladin is going to bring more protection. and They're more, more like, not battle priests, they're holy knights. Or unholy knights, depending on how you want to look at them. Now, another thing I will be doing is once I start getting a lot of character um, builds put into these different categories, I will be going back and deleting all of my old builds. All of them. Because I'm going to remake every single one of them into these category, uh, categorical classifications. So that this way you guys can go in and be like, you know what, I want to be a fighter because I want to be able to solo really well. Because I can I can basically tank and off tank. Um, or I can off tank really well and I can tank dungeons and stuff like that if I need to. I can really, I'm, I'm really good at solo play. So, and at being a solo character, I'm going to pick a fighter. I'm going to pick a barbarian. <clears throat> I like to be more stealthy and, and damage orientated. I'm going to be a rogue. I'm going to be more ranged and mixed with ranged and melee. I'm going to be a ranger. So, again, everything, it, it just comes down to how I put it all together. And I know everyone's going to say, well, how can you make like a nature warden? Or a, a, a warden rogue? Um, a warden rogue would be like a brigand. Or not a brigand. Um, yeah, a brigand. No, brigand would be more of a fighter type. So, but a warden could be a brigand. They they use you know that kind of stuff, and then um, a bandit. 
would be something that might a warden might be because they live out in the outskirts or it might be like a savage or something you know like there there's some way we could work this in because there's everything has a classification in in a role or a design if you look at um elder scrolls classics they they had 21 different uh template characters they had special sword that agent that archer um they had Spellsword, Nightblade. Nightblade was in there, and it was a classification as a master of um, basically a thief that used magic and thievery or stealthiness to be assassins and agent and stuff like this. Like they were, they were trained this way. Look at Nightblades in the game; they have the same setup. Um, they had spell swords, which were basically the spell swords. The way they described them were basically paladins. They used heavy armor and magic. To, to face enemies. So that would be more of a paladin type. And you can be an aggressive paladin. That's more um, damage orientated. Or you can be more of a paladin that's more um, protection orientated. So there's different types of paladins. There's support paladins that's, that, that focus more into like keeping their group. Like a divine paladin would be a lot more different than a... Um, than a Vengeance Paladin. A Vengeance Paladin would be something that's geared more towards damage and less towards support. So a lot of their, their sets would resemble this idea of, hey, I'm here to do damage. So they might use something like, um, you guys remember the Dark, or the, um, the first Paladin I released? It used, uh, I think it was like Hunting's Rage, and this other mon this other set that was really high spell damage, Rattle Cage, that would be more of a <clears throat> of a vengeance type paladin. On a paladin that's more geared towards damage orientation than they are about support. Then you would have one that might use like the Divine Paladin would use something like like Sanctuary with Hunting's Rage and Sentinels as their as their sets. And they'd be a Templar. And they'd basically be like a, a support healer uh, they'd be more of a tank a heal tank than anything they could offer a lot of group support through powerful heals things like that and that's how they would work so there's a lot of options in ways that you can play a character and it really comes down to how you put it together and what tools you use to play it that really you're going to play a lot into this like a like a cultist might use a uh, destruction staff on the main bar with a with a crusher enchant to debuff the enemies, and then on the back bar they might use a resto staff with a um, weakening enchant because they they do a lot of negative effects. They're kind of like you said, they're kind of like priests, but they're not. They're cultists. They use a lot of magic to influence how their enemies fight, and then they use a lot of damage abilities on top of it. So they. They use a lot of things to mitigate damage. They use a lot of things to reduce enemy damage. And then also increase the ability for your allies to do damage to them. So they're they're kind of like group support. And then you have like the shaman who's kind of similar, but it's more or less they're more geared towards healing and damage. So they're geared towards damage with healing. Uh, warlocks are more about negative effect and, and, and damage. <laughs> and... Um, magic users come in all shapes and sizes because they're, that's what they're, they are they're, they're magic users they're trained in the arts of magic and they can be more damage orientated more support orientated or more like a mix of things but they're, they're not priests they're not defined as priests or, or clerics or anything like that they're battle mages they're, they're, they're trained in the art of magic and that's it But that's what I got going on right now. So tonight, um, well, today I'm going to play, be playing D and D. It's Saturday, and it's our game day. So we're going to be playing some D and D later today. I'm, when I get home tonight, I'm going to start work on re reforming my my channel, and then coming next week, um, everything should be in place on sun uh, by Sunday evening. So that way, next week, I can start releasing builds and be like, oh, here's the Night Witch. This is a Warlock. 
oh, here's this character. They're a this or a this or this. And you guys can see how, how they work and how they, they um, play this these roles. And then you guys can see like, oh, I see why he takes these different skills and abilities. It's because they do these negative effects and everything. Like this Blood Hunter, if you guys seen how this thing could use magic and melee and really use it, you guys would be like, what? Like, he, he just put a major skill ability on his back bar? <laughs> and then he put a, he put a, um, he put this ability on his bar and then he's using things like, like debilitate or he's using something like this from a major skill. Like I might use the Scalding Ruin because it's a trap. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to be like, okay. And it's the same as using Trap Beast. It's just at a, at a range kind of thing. And I'm not even trying to do a real rotation, guys. But see, like I said, they're they're hunters. They they use abilities to trap their enemies and do different things like that. So that's why he uses scolding runes. That's why he uses abilities like like um, debilitate. Is so this way he can trap enemies and everything. He uses things like mass manifestation of terror, twisting path. Um, in the assassination line, he's going to use Killer's Blade, he's going to use Ambush, he's going to use Mirage, he's going to use Reaper's Mark, and Relentless Focus. He's going to use all these different abilities based on, guess what, the fact that he's a hunter. And that's just the beginning. This is just one character idea. And I have a notebook full. I'm not kidding you guys. I have I have a composition notebook that I've been doodling ideas down in. And I love it. So uh, I'm gonna continue working on those ideas. And what I do is I basically I use the 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 notebook as a as a rough draft. I rough draft the idea, the theory. Then I take it into the game and I create it and then I fine tune it while I'm in game so I can I can take advantage of all the different tools that the game allows me to use to create these unique characters so you guys can play them how you want. So <clears throat> But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um I hope that it was this is explanatory and it explained a lot about why I'm doing this kind of stuff because I want you guys to be able to enjoy the game. That's it. And I know how hard it is can, to be to figure out what kind of character you want to play, and how hard it can be to find that right mix of stuff. Like this Blood Hunter thing, when I started messing with it, the first thing that came to my mind was, "Yeah, I'm changing my Nightblade." Like that was the first thing I said. I, I'm, I said, "I'm changing my Nightblade into this." I have a healer Nightblade I play. This is what they're becoming, because this thing's wicked. <laughs> I love playing it. And it might be a damage dealer, but it can also off tank, which is cool. Uh, but only if you're a Nord. It, unfortunately, mine's an, a dark elf, so. But she's going to be powerful. Really powerful. And all I have to do is get the right setup. Which isn't hard because of the sets that this character uses. And if you guys seen the sets this thing used, you'd be like, what? So, but you'll, you'll find out sooner or later. Um. It's a, it's a really fun build. It's a really fun, um, like, class to play, if you will. And that's pretty much what it is. It's not a character. It's more of a class. Like, this is a classification. So this is the Bless, Ble, Blood Hunter Ranger. And, and it's the classification of it. So that way, you when I, when I make the characters from now on, instead of it saying Blood Hunter character, it's going to say Blood Hunter Ranger or Blood Hunter Rogue. Or, or it's going to say, you know, this Rogue, Warlock, after it. So this way you can go, okay, that's what it is. It's a warlock. It's a, it's, it's a cleric. So when you see them, you're going to be like, okay, I know where to find this. When I need to find it later on, I can just go through the cleric listing. Or I can just go to the knight listing. But the, the way it's going to be listed on the channel is it's going to say blood hunter, brackets, necromancer, well, knight blade, 
brackets rogue character or uh, ranger character so but yeah that's pretty much it that's what I got going on guys I, I thought I'd give you a heads up like I said on what's going on with the channel how I'm gonna be changing things and I think that this might make even uh, some more interesting place downs for you guys because then you can go you know what I want to be like a warlock character and I saw that he released this thing called uh, a night witch or a thing called a um, the the blood warlock or, or this or that you know and, and, and I really like that idea I want to play that so you like a, a witch and a warlock are basically male and female um, but then there's cultists then there's like not really dark priests because you can be a dark priest I mean we got necromancers now so you can also be a priest of Akavar or Al uh, or Akatosh or um, Jode and Jude you, you get to make your decision on on what kind of priest you want to make but then you can, you've got all these selections of choices and how they can play yeah and this is a, a werewolf by the way it's awesome <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm super stoked you guys uh, this this brain this but this isn't this isn't just going to help me bring more to the community it's gonna help define more things in the community so people can say hey you know what I've got a fighter we've got a knight we've got a cleric we've got a, a or we've got a druid we've got a priest in our group and we've got all these rangers and fighters and, and, and barbarians and stuff let's go do a dungeon like let's go do a trial that's what I want to see is people saying that kind of stuff because that's how the game is meant to be played you have these heavy <coughs> heavy hitters survivable guys your fighters and your, your barbarians who can fight up close and take a beating while dealing out a lot of damage then you have these other characters who are more stealthy sneaky uh, you know come back fight from a distance kind of thing and then the spellcasters and the healers so you have these different group dynamics that you can put together utilizing these different characteristics this is the classic trinity okay but it's done in such a way that you can utilize different group dynamics to create the kind of group you want to play so that's it and that's it for the video guys you guys know what's coming next if you guys like this video hit that like button if you guys want to see more videos by me you can subscribe other than that i want to thank you all for watching until next time have a wonderful day and this guy might see you in game bye